So I hear you just got a K31. Yeah, it's not bad. How are you finding it? How are you getting on with it? Well, it's really accurate, and it's bang on at 100 and 200. You taking it out any further yet? Well, it was really strange, because I took it out to 300 and it shot about a foot high. Yeah? What do you mean, yeah? I mean, yeah. It's supposed to, in it. Huh? Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Today we're going to be bloke explaining the bizarre strangeness of the K31 rear sight. Now for this video I've taken my target sights off my K31 and the poor thing looks naked. Very strange. Right anyway, well the rear sight on a K31 from the outside it looks just like any old tangent rear sight on any military rifle from Europe. Sight set from uh, 100 to a rather over ambitious 1500 meters adjusted by moving the slider. Now what's interesting is how it's set for each range and I'm going to first demonstrate this by firing three rounds at 100, 200, 300 and 400 meter sight settings. So let's see what happens. So I've got a target set up at 50 meters down there. I've got 12 rounds and I'm trying out some of these Northridge uh, plastic reproduction charger clips courtesy of Aussie Dave. Thank you Dave. Let's see how this goes. Well, the charger works and flicks out. Now let's see what happens on the target. First, with the sight set to 100 meters. Now I know for the purposes of accuracy testing that three shots isn't a group but all we're doing here is seeing the difference in elevation. So let's move it up to 200. Pop in another charger. Right, 300. And finally, 400. Now let's go take a look. Now not the greatest feat of marksmanship I've ever performed, I will have to admit. Now I hold just a bit under the black, about there. So at 100 we've got our three shots going roughly point of aim. 200 is probably these three, so we're a little bit above. 300 is probably these three, so we split the difference. And we've got a big jump. 400 is these three, the elevation's easy. Just as a general rule, with uh, normal military rifles, the uh, step from 100 yards to 200 yards or meters is about two minutes of angle, two to three is about three, three to four is about four. However here we've got probably about, that's about an inch, so about uh, two minutes of angle, and then we've got a massive jump. That's probably, well these are about an inch, one, two, call it three inches, so that's six minutes of angle roughly, and then from three to four it's one, it's about two and a bit inches, so again about four minutes of angle as you'd expect. Now why on earth is that? What's the thinking behind it? Now luckily we don't have to guess or think there's something wrong with this particular rifle, because all is explained in this book, Einfache Schießlehrer für den feldmäßigen Gebrauch von Gewehr, Karabiner, Pistole und Revolver by Mr. K. Zimmermann, who was a world master shot. 
and this is a book from uh, 1942, so in the middle of the war. Now in this book we have a drop table for the K31. We've also got drop tables for the Model 11 rifle and carbine and the Model 1889 rifle, which was still in use with the, uh, the Home Guard at this point. Now he quite helpfully explains to us that uh, the K31 is cited to be what's called FLEC, i.e. point of aim, point of impact, for 100 and 200 metres. And from 300 metres backwards, it's cited to be what they called Schwarz Aufsitzend. That means the black sitting on top of the front sight, or a six o'clock hold in uh, normal English usage. And uh, we've got very detailed drop tables. Now the way the sights are set from 300 backwards, but at 300, you will be shooting 30 centimeters high, at 400, 40 centimeters high, at 500, 50 centimeters high, and so on. Now, what this actually means is that the uh, 300 meter sight at 400 meters distance is bang on point of aim, point of impact. Now, what's the point of all that? Now, actually, the point of all that is largely the influence of the shooting clubs, which were a massive part of the national defence and it was actually approved for both the 1889 and the rifle and the carbine model 1911 to sight your rifle in so that it was either point of aim point of impact at 300 or 30 centimeters high and Mr Zimmerman has quite handily provided us drop tables for both types of setting and the ones in brackets are for uh, six o'clock hold and the ones not in brackets are for point of aim point of impact so it was an approved way to sight your rifle and since target shooting at Switzerland happens pretty much exclusively at 300 metres, there was no point to have a uh, 6 o'clock point of aim sighted in for 100 and 200. Also, by this point, it was recognised that uh, distances in combat were largely under 300 metres anyway. Now, actually, are there any practical advantages to this, provided that your people can uh, take into account the fact that their rifle is sighted unconventionally? Well... The target we use in the Feldschießen and the Obligatorisch, it represents a prone rifleman at 300 metres. And if your rifle set up to shoot um, point of aim, point of impact, you're covering half of it with your front sight. And the front sights on the Swiss rifles are reasonably coarse. In fact, they're very, very well apportioned. They're not like the fiddly little fine blade on a 1903 Springfield. So realistically, if you're engaging someone at 300 metres, well, 300 metres is quite a long way. Uh, you really don't want to be obscuring half of them with your front sight. So, if you know you can aim sort of at the ground in front of someone lying prone at 300 metres, you'll see them fully and you'll hopefully hit them. 400 metres, you're not, not going to engage someone prone anyway. 40 centimetres high, we're sort of talking uh, aiming, at the, aiming at the groin and uh, impacting somewhere in the upper chest. Beyond that, if you're actually engaging someone, are you even engaging an individual target? And if so, beyond that, if you were to aim at their legs at the floor, it kind of makes a certain degree of sense. I'm sure that in reality, uh, most soldiers' rifle sights were never moved off of 100 or 300 or whatever was the lowest setting back in the day anyway. But although it seems bizarre at first, I think practically it's probably not too bad. It's certainly weird from a British or an American perspective where you're used to the range being point of aim, point of impact, uh, whatever distance you're shooting at. So there you go. So now you know. Aim a foot low at 300 yards. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Like our Facebook page. And I hope to see you again on the range sometime soon. Bye. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, it's a bit embarrassing being naked like that in front of all the people. Don't worry, I'll get you home, I'll clean you up, and I'll put your clothes back on. You'll get your mattress side back, don't worry. There you go. Good girl, good girl.